Good evening. Welcome to live presentation today on lymphocyte immunization therapy and how to select couples who will be benefited by it. Lymphocyte immunization therapy is an active immunomodulatory treatment used in patients who have repeated miscarriages, recurrent implantation failure, and unexplained infertility. But is it useful in all these patients? Is there any way to select couples who have better chance of succeeding with this treatment? So today, in my talk, I will be speaking on this important and clinically the most relevant aspect of lymphocyte immunization therapy, and that is how to select couples who are likely to be benefited or who are most likely to be benefited by lymphocyte immunization therapy. I am Dr. Mohan Rao. I am a practicing gynecologist with special interest in the field of reproductive immunology. We have our own center, Dr. Rao's Center for Reproductive Immunology in Mumbai where we treat patients with reproductive failure, that is recurrent miscarriages, implantation failures, and unexplained infertility using immunomodulatory treatments, including lymphocyte immunization therapy. A few days back, there was a patient in my clinic. She had come with three, four big files. She sat in front of me and said, doctor, I have five miscarriages, but I don't know what is the cause. So I started explaining to her the different causes of miscarriage. She said, doctor, I know everything. I have read everything about the causes. So then I started telling her that there is one more condition in uh, that there can be immunological problem, immunological rejection of pregnancy. She said, doctor, I have done all tests and all tests are normal. So finally, I had to tell her, Minakshi, what you are telling is absolutely right. You, they, in patients like you, there is always, uh, where all investigations are normal, there is possibility of a different condition known as an alloimmune rejection of pregnancy or alloimmune factor. And for that purpose, we have to do certain specific tests, which will help us to find out your problem and whether further treatment, the immunomodulatory treatment like lymphocyte immunization therapy will be beneficial for you or not. So friends, this brings us to the uh, topic of today's uh, discussion, and that is lymphocyte immunization therapy, how to select couples who will be benefited. Now, lymphocyte immunization therapy is used for reproductive failures, and it is one of the important part of reproductive immunology therapeutics. Now, reproductive immunology is that part of immunology that deals with reproductive system, both male and female. But here we are uh, focused on the immunology of female reproductive system. Now, come, coming to lymphocyte immunization therapy. What is lymphocyte immunization therapy? As the name suggests, is the use of lymphocytes, or to be specific, allogenic lymphocytes, that is lymphocytes from any human source other than the patient to induce certain immunomodulatory changes which will help to prevent miscarriage or implantation failure or infertility. How does it act? These lymphocytes, when injected intradermally, produce certain immunomodulatory changes. Certain changes in the humoral immunity, that is they produce certain protective antibodies called blocking antibodies or asymmetric antibodies. And uh, certain changes in the cellular immunity, production of certain type of cells called T regulatory cells or T reg cells, which produce tolerance effect and prevent rejection of pregnancy, preventing the uh, reproductive failure. Now, which patients will be benefited by lymphocyte immunization therapy is the next question. As I said, there are three groups those who have miscarriages, those who have implantation failure, and those who have unexplained infertility. Though there are three groups, they are not distinct or exclusive. There is a big overlap of, uh, in this, and therefore most of these patients might be requiring, um, might be having this immunological factor. For example, patients who have repeated miscarriages, there is one subgroup where these patients are conceived spontaneously and they keep on miscarrying in spite of everything being normal. While the second subgroup where they have difficulty in conceiving or infertility, then they underwent IVF. And with IV, if they are conceiving, but they are uh, uh, miscarrying again and again without any apparent cause. In the second group of implantation failure, there is one subgroup where these patients, these patients had other factors of infertility, like say tubal factor, and then they underwent IVF and they have failed to conceive even with IVF. While second subgroup in this implantation failure are those patients where everything is normal, they had unexpected infertility. Then they underwent IV, but still they are not conceiving and uh, they are facing recurrent implantation failures. And the third group is 
pure uh, unexplained infertility all everything is normal and they have not undergone ivf uh, or currently they are not ready to undergo ivf so these three groups are possible candidates who will be benefited by lymphocyte immunization therapy so how can we select from these groups is it possible to select from these group how to uh, use uh, how to uh, uh, which patients will be more likely to be benefited and this is possible by proper history and certain tests for example in history certain things are important for example in patients who have repeated miscarriages if the uh, karyotype of products of conception is done and on a regular basis if the report is showing normal genetically normal then this uh, indicates more of uh, towards immunological problem if all the tests uh, which are required which are done for all the known factors of mis miscarriages or ivf failure are normal these again indicate more likely to be immunological problem and lymphocyte immunization therapy is indicated but for specific selection of patients there are certain immunological tests which we do which help us in selecting these patients which are these tests there are four tests that we do at our center the first is lymphocyte cross match second is natural killer cells in the peripheral blood third is natural killer cells in the endometrium and fourth is serum tnf alpha a cytokine there are many other tests which are done in different centers but these four are more specific and they help us in uh, uh, coming to a conclusion so the first is lymphocyte cross match lymphocyte cross match is also called as hla cross match and as the name suggests it's a cross match between the lymphocyte of the donor or husband and the plasma of wife and if the test is negative then the couple is likely to be benefited by lymphocyte immunization therapy the underlying factor can be autoimmune and the patient will be benefited by lymphocyte immunization therapy if the report is strongly positive then lymphocyte immunization therapy is not likely to add any benefit to this patient and it, it will not be recommended to them here i want to clear one important point related to lymphocyte cross match if you take all women who have spontaneous conception and normal pregnancies and if you do lymphocyte cross match in them what will you find it will not be positive in all patients it is not rather positive in all patients in some patients it will be positive some it will be negative though they don't have any reproductive failure <clears throat> this is uh, this is because the lymphocyte cross match doesn't remain positive throughout the life so it is important to note here that in presence of lymphocyte cross match and repeated miscarriages unexplained infertility or uh, um, uh, implantation failure these are the cases which are most likely to be benefited by lymphocyte immunization therapy second test is the estimation of natural killer cells now natural killer cells are present in peripheral blood as well as in endometrium from our point of view so in the blood the natural killer cells which are present are called cd16 plus 56 type of cells in our center we have found a strong association between low cd16 plus 56 cells and presence of reproductive failure internationally there is still no uniform consensus consensus about the significant levels of natural killer cells though there are many studies which have shown including the meta analysis by sri vidya sheshadri and sankara that there is increased concentration of peripheral blood nk cells in patients who have repeated miscarriages and unexplained infertility so the uh, the next alternative or option is to do estimate nk cells natural killer cells in the endometrial lining now natural killer cells are normally present in the endometrial lining and there is a significant number at the time of ovulation and implantation and they play a very important role in the process of implantation they are required for implantation especially the vascular changes that occur at the time of implantation nk cells play a very important role but these cd56 cells if their concentration is very high they tend to maturate into cd57 type of cells which are not normally present in endometrium these cells are cytotoxic and they can have detrimental effect on pregnancy they can lead to uh, implantation failures or even recurrent miscarriages we can estimate these endometrial cd57 cells by simple endometrial biopsy done in the luteal phase between 19 to 23rd day the endometrium is collected in formalin and is sent for immunohistochemistry for cd57 type of cells if the report indicates positive is positive for cd57 
that indicates that this particular patient requires immunomodulation, especially lymphocyte immunization therapy, and it will it will be uh, help help her in overcoming the uh, problem of pregnancy loss. It is also shown that uh, there is a strong association between endometriosis and presence of endometrial CD57 cells. You know that endometriosis has strong immunological uh, basis, and it has been found that patients with endometriosis have high concentration of CD57 in the endometrial lining as well as in the peritoneal fluid, and this is one of the important causes of reproductive failure in endometriosis, and these patients do well with immunomodulation, especially lymphocyte immunization therapy. So that is about endometrial NK cells. The next test is estimation of a cytokine called TNF alpha or tumor necrosis factor alpha. As the name suggests, this is body's natural protection against the development of cancer against the cancer cells, and the cancer cells are immediately destroyed by these this cytokine. This is an inflammatory cytokine, but higher levels are detrimental to pregnancy. The normal range is 4 to 12 picogram per ml, but higher levels can affect implantation as well as uh, can cause miscarriages. And many studies have shown higher concentration of TNF-alpha in patients who have recurrent implantation failures. So this is the test which again help us to select couple for immunomodulation. Now there are certain newer tests which can help us in uh, selecting couples in a better way one of these tests is estimation of T-Rex cells. We are not able to do this in our center, but T-Rex cells, as I mentioned before, are important cells for protection of pregnancy. They produce the uh, tolerance to uh, the tolerance in uh, a tolerant environment and prevent the immunological rejection. So low uh, T-Rex cells is, becomes an indication for use of immunomodulation. And these cells are also, these tests are also useful to monitor the progress of pregnancy and a failing, uh, a falling level of T rex cells is an indication of failing pregnancy. So yes, so these tests are helpful in detecting patients who uh, can be uh, benefited by uh, lymphocyte immunization therapy. So friends, in conclusion, it is very important to remember that alloimmune factor can be there in patients who have reproductive failure that is uh, unexplained miscarriages, implantation failure, or uh, infertility. As the, the research goes on in this field, we will get better tests, more effective tests to select couples in a, in a more efficient way and to monitor them in a better way. Uh, but till that time, we have to use whatever test we have in the most efficient manner so that we can select these couples who are going to be benefited by lymphocyte immunization therapy so that they can overcome their problem of reproductive failure. Thank you. We'll come to the question. The, there's one question which I always asked and uh, which is there and that is, is it required to repeat these tests after, uh, after doing lymphocyte immunization therapy? This is a very important question. And because we do these tests to select the couples, but after doing lymphocyte immunization therapy, it is not required to repeat these tests. One thing about lymphocyte, uh, uh, lymphocyte cross match, I told you that after lymphocyte immunization therapy, not all patients become uh, cross match positive uh, before planning pregnancy. We used to do this before, and uh, our analysis showed that those patients who had succeeded after LIT, there were equal, almost equal number of patients who had positive cross-match and negative cross-match. So it, it is not necessary to repeat the uh, cross-match after the LIT, especially with the protocol that we use, the particular cell concentration we use, we don't require to repeat it. Same thing with natural killer cells. But with TNF alpha, yes, if there is high level of TNF alpha, then these particular patients are treated with lymphocyte immunization therapy. In addition to that, there are certain antioxidant medications we use so that the lymphocyte, uh, so that the TNF alpha levels come back to normal. We confirm it by a repeat test of TNF alpha, and then the patient goes on for uh, to plan pregnancy or for IVF, and then the chances of success are the best. So I think, uh, uh, this talk uh, basically focuses on the need to do 
test before selecting couple for any immunomodulatory treatment and these tests are definitely helpful in selecting couples so that the, uh, um, the they are more likely to be benefited and the treatment is not given to those patients who are uh, who don't require it so in that way patients don't have to undergo unnecessary treatment and at the same time the treatment doesn't lose its efficacy because if it is given to those patients who don't require it then uh, it reflects on badly on the therapy rather than uh, and that the efficacy of therapy is not that good so therefore selection of patient is very important as for any therapy also for lymphocyte immunization therapy i think we have come to towards the end of uh, this uh, presentation so uh, if you have any doubts you can always be in touch with me uh, with our center and uh, on uh, our on my email on uh, mohan@drrao.com or on our helpline number which is uh, uh, 9833201544 i think there are some more questions uh, only uh, only blood investigations are sufficient or endometrial sampling is a must good question see uh, in usually in most of the cases blood investigations are sufficient so if uh, blood investigations indicate then there is no need to do again uh, endometrial biopsy but if an endometrial dnc or a hysteroscopy or endometrial biopsy is planned for some other reason say to do tb pcr then you, we can always send and collect endometrium for this for cd57 also and it can be done and presence of cd57 cells is a strong evidence that patient will be benefited by lymphocyte immunization therapy and so therefore a lymphocyte cross match and uh, endometrial cd57 positive uh, is those those two cells uh, test themselves is a full proof uh, method of selection for lymphocyte immunization therapy so i think sam uh, uh, this answers your question so uh, we uh, we will uh, we uh, will continue our uh, presentations related to the immunomodulatory treatments lymphocyte immunization therapy and other modalities of treatment in our subsequent presentations and i'm sure this will help you to educate your patients in a better way related to the uh, reproductive immunology aspect of pregnancy loss thank you very much